Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Living and working aboard any military vessel can result in a lot of stress. However, this is especially true of the largest and busiest naval ships, aircraft carriers. Fortunately, United States military commanders have found a unique, if slightly dangerous, way to give their crews some much-needed relaxation time. They're known as swim calls. This is when crews and personnel are given the opportunity to swim in the open sea while the carrier is stationary. A specific area will typically be designated where individuals can safely enter the water and enjoy a nice swim. Though there is no shortage of fun, swim calls also involve stringent safety measures, such as lifeguards and even patrol boats to look for potential threats. Whenever a person enters the open ocean, one of the first threats that come to mind is sharks. Indeed, navies around the world are well aware of the history involving shipwrecks and sunken vessels that encounter sharks. Perhaps one of the best examples is the USS Indianapolis. This Portland-class heavy cruiser was sunk by a Japanese submarine in July 1945. Of the roughly 800 men who went into the water, it's estimated that some 150 were lost due to shark attacks. And though shark attacks are indeed rare, Swim calls are generally accompanied by a team of lookouts, who make it their duty to look for sharks and other dangerous animals specifically. This is particularly important because sharks are attracted to noise. And swim calls commonly occur alongside dancing, music, and lots of jumping in and out of the sea. As humans, we have a visceral reaction to both sharks and the ocean itself. So even though the data doesn't really support having a fear of sharks, civilians and military members alike often cannot get stories like that of the USS Indianapolis out of their minds. This Coast Guard cutter was hosting a swim call in August of 2020. Spotters noticed a six to eight foot shark moving toward the swimming crew members. Upon recognizing the threat, crews fired upon the shark several times. While the crew members scrambled to get safely back on board their ships. In the end, nobody was injured, but the shark clearly showed signs of aggression, which could easily have resulted in an injury. Though the U.S. Coast Guard does not generally consider sharks a threat to themselves, they are well aware of the threats they pose to swimmers and surfers. This team is out near the Farallon Islands, near the coast of San Francisco. They were called in to rescue a man who had been bitten by a shark and needed emergency transport to the nearest medical center. Thanks to their fast response, the man made a full recovery, despite being nearly 30 miles from shore. Of course, the United States military knows how vital the ocean ecosystem is to our planet. 
So while sharks can pose a threat at times, the Navy has taken a number of steps to minimize the impact their operations have on all ocean life. Especially mammals like dolphins, seals, and whales. This is one of the reasons the military created the Marine Mammal Observing Unit, or MMOU. Among other things, the scientists and researchers assigned to the MMOU attempt to study the impacts of naval training and testing exercises on marine life. During missions and exercises, they will often look for any animals that might be negatively impacted. And even recommend the military cease what it's doing until they can determine the situation is safe again. This concern for marine life goes far beyond simply avoiding an ecological catastrophe. Over the years, the MMOU has employed marine mammals, particularly dolphins and sea lions, for a variety of different tasks. Among the most common is detecting underwater objects, such as mines or enemy divers. Useful in both military and security operations, these teams have trained marine mammals to use their keen underwater hearing and natural sonar-like abilities to locate all sorts of hazards. Upon discovering an unfamiliar object, the dolphin or sea lion will affix a marker or flag and then report back to their handlers so they can inspect it further. Sea mines remain one of the biggest hazards boats can encounter. These explosive devices are not only specifically designed to be hidden under the water, but they also aren't able to distinguish military vessels from civilian boats in any way. Even older mines, many of which were first deployed back in World War II, are capable of causing significant damage to ships, submarines, and other watercraft, not to mention sea life. Unfortunately, many of the older mines still hiding in the lakes and oceans of the world are overgrown and hidden, which makes them even more difficult to detect. However, dolphins and seals can easily locate underwater anomalies that humans might otherwise miss. Since mines are a hazard to everyone, the Department of Defense in the United States also operates the Navy Marine Mammal Humanitarian Mine Action Organization, or HMA. Again, this involves using animals to find and flag potentially dangerous undersea ordinances. For instance, the Mark 7 Marine Mammal System employs specially trained bottlenose dolphins who travel worldwide. helping civilian and military personnel find threats that might otherwise have remained hidden. When something of note is discovered, the dolphin will hit a special paddle on the boat. Its trainer will then provide it with a marker, which the dolphin will put next to the object so that the divers can come back and investigate. Already, 
These teams have seen immense success working to clear mines in places like Montenegro and Croatia. Despite the critical roles that dolphins can play in the mission to locate unexploded mines and other ordinances from our oceans, they aren't capable of actually removing them. This is still a job that requires human expertise, and it's an extremely dangerous one at that. This is where Task Force 56 comes in. These men and women are part of the 5th Fleet and operate in the Middle East. Among their many duties are explosive ordnance disposal, coastal warfare, expeditionary logistics, and marine mammal protection and intervention. Because of the many different types of jobs required of Task Force 56, these soldiers undergo extensive training both before and during their Middle Eastern deployments. Dive training is a big part of this. In order to support their explosive ordnance disposal technicians, the men and women of the 56 train in various diving scenarios and conditions. Navy divers must also learn about the physics of diving, including pressure, gas laws, and decompression tables. They also study dive-related medical conditions such as decompression sickness and oxygen toxicity. While important, all of this pales in comparison to the actual Task Force 56 Mine Response Training. These generally consist of exercises meant to mimic real-life ordnance disposal scenarios. Which can be performed as a solo team or in conjunction with foreign military members. During exercise Eager Lion in 2019, U.S. and Canadian troops based in Aqaba, Jordan, carried out a floating mine drill designed to heighten their real-life reaction times. In this scenario, the teams are alerted about a potential mine discovery, at which point both a boat and a helicopter are deployed. The helicopter drops swimmers, who attach an explosive to the mine before being recovered by the waiting fast boat. Once they reach a safe distance, the explosive is detonated to neutralize the mine. Task Force 56 and other similar units may be responsible for mine disposal, but most of their time is spent patrolling waters in small, fast-moving boats. These vessels are typically heavily armed and quick enough to respond to virtually any threat in a matter of minutes. From sharks to mines to boats, very little gets past the watchful eyes of these highly trained naval troops. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.